The problem is that since 1864, we've had a debt-based banking system. All our money is based on government debt. We cannot extinguish government debt without extinguishing our money supply. That's why talk of paying off the national debt without reforming our banking system is an impossibility. That's why the solution does not lie in discussing the size of the national debt, rather it lies in reforming our banking system. This is the Federal Reserve headquarters in Washington. It sits on this very impressive address, right on Constitution Avenue, right across from the Lincoln Memorial. But is it federal? Is it really part of the United States government? Well, what we're about to show you is that there's nothing federal about the Federal Reserve, and there are no reserves. The name is a deception created back before the Federal Reserve Act was passed in 1913 to make Americans think that America's central bank operates in the public interest. The truth is that the Federal Reserve is a private bank owned by private stockholders and run purely for their private profit. That's exactly correct. The uh, Fed is a privately owned for-profit corporation, which uh, again has no reserves, at least no reserves available to back up the Federal Reserve notes, which is our common currency. Oh, absolutely. The Federal Reserve is neither federal and has doubtful reserves. It's a private bank that is owned by member banks and uh, it was chartered uh, under the guise of deceit by an act of Congress in 1913. If there's still any doubt whether the Federal Reserve is a part of the U.S. government, check your local telephone book. In most cities, it is not listed in the blue government pages. It is listed in the business white pages right next to Federal Express, another private company. But more directly, U.S. courts have ruled time and time again that the Fed is a private corporation. Why can't Congress do something about the Fed? Most members of Congress just don't understand the system, and the few who do are afraid to speak up. For example, initially a veteran congressman from Chicago asked us if he could be interviewed for this video. However, both times our camera crew arrived at his office to do the interview, this was all we were able to film. The congressman never appeared, and eventually decided he no longer wanted to participate. But a few others in Congress have been bolder over the years. Here are three quick examples. In 1923, Representative Charles A. Lindbergh, a Republican from Minnesota, and father of the famed aviator Lucky Lindy, Put it this way, the financial system has been turned over to the Federal Reserve Board. That board administers the finance system by authority of a purely profiteering group. The system is private, conducted for the sole purpose of obtaining the greatest possible profits from the use of other people's money. One of the most outspoken critics in Congress of the Fed was the former chairman of the House Banking and Currency Committee during the Great Depression years. Louis T. McFadden, Republican of Pennsylvania, said in 1932, We have in this country one of the most corrupt institutions the world has ever known. I refer to the Federal Reserve Board. This evil institution has impoverished the people of the United States and has practically bankrupted our government. It has done this through the corrupt practices of the moneyed vultures who control it. Senator Barry Goldwater was a frequent critic of the Fed. Most Americans have no real understanding of the operation of the international money lenders. The accounts of the Federal Reserve System have never been audited. It operates outside the control of Congress and manipulates the credit of the United States. The Federal Reserve really, even though it is not part of the federal government, it is more powerful than the federal government. It's more powerful than the president, the Congress, and the courts. Now, a lot of people challenge me on that, but let me prove my case. The Federal Reserve determines what the average person's car payment is going to be, what their house payment is going to be, and whether they have a job or not. And I submit to you that that's total control. And the Federal Reserve is the largest single creditor of the United States government. What does Proverbs tell us? The borrower is servant to the lender. 
What one has to understand is that from the day the Constitution was adopted right up to today, the folks who profit from privately owned central banks, as Madison called them, the money changers, have fought a running battle for control over who gets to print America's money. Why is who prints the money so important? Think of money as just another commodity. If you have a monopoly on a commodity that everyone needs, everyone wants, and nobody has enough of, there are lots of ways to make a profit and also exert tremendous political influence. That's what this battle is all about. Throughout the history of the United States, the money power has gone back and forth between Congress and some sort of privately owned central bank. The Founding Fathers knew the evils of a privately owned central bank. First of all, they had seen how the privately owned British central bank, the Bank of England, had run up the British national debt to such an extent that Parliament had been forced to place unfair taxes on the American colonies. In fact, as we'll see later, Ben Franklin claimed that this was the real cause of the American Revolution. Most of the Founding Fathers realized the potential dangers of banking and feared bankers' accumulation of wealth and power. Jefferson put it this way, I sincerely believe that banking institutions are more dangerous to our liberties than standing armies. The issuing power should be taken from the banks and restored to the people to whom it properly belongs. That succinct statement of Jefferson is, in fact, the solution to all our economic problems today. It bears repeating. The issuing power should be taken from the banks and restored to the people to whom it properly belongs. James Madison, the main author of the Constitution, agreed. Interestingly, he called those behind the central bank scheme money changers. Madison strongly criticized their actions. History records that the money changers have used every form of abuse, intrigue, deceit, and violent means possible to maintain their control over governments by controlling money and its issuance. The battle over who gets to issue our money has been the pivotal issue throughout the history of the United States. Wars are fought over it, depressions are caused to acquire it. Yet after World War I, this battle was rarely mentioned in newspapers or history books. Why? By World War I, the money changers, with their dominant wealth, had seized control of most of the nation's press. Throughout U.S. history, this battle over who gets the power to issue our money has raged. In fact, it's changed hands back and forth eight times since 1764. Yet this fact has virtually vanished from public view for over three generations behind a smokescreen emitted by Fed cheerleaders in the media. Until we stop talking about deficits and government spending, and start talking about who controls how much money we have, it's all just a big shell game, a complete and utter deception. It won't matter if you pass an ironclad amendment to the Constitution mandating a balanced budget. Our situation is only going to get worse until we root out the cause at its source.